Hello everybody, I'm Panros776 and I'm here to inform you today that we are um, screwed. We've got Tina, we've got Joe Shamir, we've got Legendary Camilla, we've got all of that. What we don't have is an Ike counter. My best bet is that maybe Camilla can do a bunch of damage and I mean Shamir has Fatal Smoke so maybe we can chip through him? But that's not a good plan. On the enemy team, Ninja Saraki, uh, the new Mirabilis plus one, Regan plus one, Winter, Edelgard, Yuri plus two, and Ashera plus two. So, uh, I mean, no Ike this time around, and I mean, that works for me. Our best plan for dealing with Ike is hoping that he doesn't show up. <laughs> I, I do actually have an answer to him, I just don't have that answer. This season I wasn't able to get all the setup done in time, so for now we're just running with this. And well, they bolt towered us, very rude, very rude, and that means that our Idun, who is normally so great at dealing with Edelgards, is gonna have a little bit of a rough time, I'm afraid. And our Camilla also having not the best time. And they backed out. Luckily for us, um, they, they don't know what distances are. We steal their movement buffs, we buff our Shamir, we run halfway down the map and we kill them. Now unfortunately the rest of our movement here not going quite so great, so we are kind of under threat, but it matters not. We secure the surrender and this season it's going to be pretty important to get those, honestly. Alrighty then, battle number two. Our opponents here, four. Mm. Sumeria plus one, Veil, Yunaka, Hayapaya, Jolion, and the new Fancy Murr with warp bubbles and all that other stuff that Murr does. And the way things are going, I'm kind of suspecting that um, regardless of being worried about Ike, our life this season might just be getting Bolt Tower all the dang time. Bolt Tower bonus season was last season, but Apparently these people do not care, they're gonna bot tower, they're gonna smack my Byleth, they're gonna destroy my Iran. they're gonna use their duo Leon to halt the action of my Camilla, and then to add insult to injury, um, well, they fail smoked us, so all of our units are on one hit point, very rude. And they're just gonna they're just gonna save against us. Huh. Take this, please. Some decent damage into Mur there with Camilla. Shamir, can you finish this off? No, because of the flipping fire. You can do it. Ranged units can't go through the fire miserable state of affairs and they're gonna do it all over again Yunaka does not actually have the damage to kill Mirabilis but the special is gonna help her out now again using the fire using the Julian to just wall out our units and so we don't get to hit them and you know what? Why not do it a third time? There's Julian. He's gonna take care of Freya. May love find you. 
And with that done, Shamir is not getting an action yet again. And if they want to get aggressive here and break the hindrance, which they'll probably do next turn, or I mean, they might just finish the map next turn because they do have the range to do that. But whatever they choose to do, what? No, you, you can do it. You, 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 no, they missed a pot. They, why? Why didn't they get the pot? You, you could have. The, the pot's right there. Or you could have broken the hindrance, ended Shamir's turn, gotten an. But you didn't do either of that. You just. I, I swear, even though they won, I don't believe these people. Well, anyway, let's try and get that out of my mind, and let's keep going, shall we? Battle number three? Are we on three now? It's Legendary Ninian plus one, Legendary Eliwood plus one, Brave Moth plus ten, Ashera plus five, Elamine plus four, and Garrick plus to are they about to do what I think they're about to do? We'll find out. We'll find out any second now. Because this does look to me an awful lot like a turbo buffing Brave Marth team. And they've put Brave Marth in range, and would you look at that? We stole all of his buffs. Let me help. How, how, how many weeks has it been since Tina came out? And people are still making the exact same mistake. They do not read her weapon. They do not know that Tina steals all your buffs. If you're running a team like this, you need to have a unit to sacrifice who has more buffs than your Marth, so that your Marth can keep all of his buffs. Right? But that's not what happened today. Okay. Well, next battle here is safe, plus seven, Julian. Plumeria plus nine, Duo Biolith plus one, Veil plus one, and four plus two. Can I have to see an ice lock there for? Well, I mean, not that I'm complaining. For once, whatever that building was, it's not our problem. Because our catapult got rid of it. And uh, they're, they're just saving this stuff. They're just, they're just saving it. Well, would you look at that. 32 damage and a dead eye for 53. Yeah, you slipped up big time, buddy. Now, um, after that, it doesn't look like we're getting anywhere. <laughs> Camilla able to teleport forward very aggressively, but not actually hit anything. But does that matter? It looks to me like the answer is no, that does not matter at all. Now, um, it would have been nice if we could have ended the season there, but unfortunately there's three more days of it. Here we've got Brave Corin plus two, Veil vale plus four, Emblem Ike plus one, Safe plus one, Rat Tosca plus one, and Harmonic Chloe plus 10. Setting up Ike, setting up the green under him, now changing the green out for Divine Vein Stone. They've got Veil support as well. Um, yeah, I'm gonna be honest, we don't stand a freaking chance, buddy. <laughs> Well, I mean, I might be wrong. We'll, we'll see how it goes. 12 damage. I don't hate 12 damage. But did I doing less damage because of all the ridiculous stuff that Ike does to people? Camilla. 31 brings him down to 15. And 21 times 2 reduced to nothing. 
This unit is absurd. I mean, one of the Ike counters, right, is AoE. Obviously, we don't have any AoE, but this, this is the very first Ike that's showing up to the map, and they've got the AoE counter right there by bringing the Brave Corrin with the safe skill removed just as a Divine Vein Stone support, because Divine Vein Stone halves AoE damage. This is a frankly absurd unit. I mean it. It's absurd. Because even though there are counters to it, it is very easy to bring along units to counter all those counters. And I mean, even taking the counters out of contention, there's still the fact that he beats pretty much everything without trying. I'll guide you. <laughs> like the Ike played just without thinking is already a terrifying unit, and Ike played with a little bit of tryharding is more or less unbeatable. So again, next week, next week we're gonna shred this guy into tiny little pieces, hopefully, maybe. Um, <laughs> but this week you can you can just see it is not happening. It's not happening in the slightest. Moving Veil up. Normally this would be our one chance to get a kill with Mirabilis, but Veil vale is actually stupidly tanky, so that's not happening either. In fact, it's so not happening, they're gonna do it twice. And pots secured. At least they actually got the pots. They can be on their way after they press the harmonic button for swag reasons. By your side, Chloe. Huh. Eh, cool animation, I guess. But yeah, that's what Ike does. Let's hope that we never see him again. Or failing that, let's hope that he dies in a mysterious accident. Next foe here is four. Brave Robin, uh, Legendary Corrin, plus ten. Attuned Shida, Rat Tosca, and Attuned a Peony. You know, a few weeks ago I would have thought this is ridiculous, but this time I'm just gonna say thank goodness it's Shida, or well, in this specific case, thank goodness it's Corin that they decided to put up front. Because Corin, especially with the Rally Spectrum that we stole, does not stand the chance. For Rally Spectrum and all the other buffs that we also stole. You ready? Shida wouldn't have stood much of a chance either, but uh yeah, well, frankly, neither of those units stood any chance whatsoever. And, well, there's the proof of that in the surrender. Well, you know, who's next? It is Atari Azura, Ninja Sanaki, Ninja Lin, plus one, four, plus one, Ivy, and Blue Maria plus four. And what is it with people and Vault Tower this season, huh? They just lined that thing right up there, and they're using their fancy powers of teleportation to potentially snipe out our hindrance as well. At least that definitely looks like the angle here. Or, well, they've, they've already secured both pots. Normally people wait until after they've beaten the map to do that, but no, doing it first. Bolt Tower, as expected, goes off. Ivy attacking first, going to take care of Violet. 
and I'm going to be honest, at this point, they've already won. So long as they don't make a hideous mistake somewhere, they've already won. Because Ninja Sanaki has two actions. Atari Azura has two actions. Ninja Lin has two actions. And they've got four with Gale Force, who probably they're not even going to need because, well, we've already got more actions than the number of units on the team. <laughs> but you know what, sure, let's charge it up anyway. Why not? Oh, no, not actually charging it up. Never mind, but yeah, here come the duo skills. Plural. And because they've already got both pots, they can actually just clean up the rest of the map right here. Not an issue at all. Well, we got Bolt Tower. That's just what Bolt Tower does to people. You're not surviving a map when none of your units have any HP left. Well, next up here, Joe Violet, plus 10. Plumeria, plus 10. Veil, plus 10. Emblem Ike, plus 5. Haven't finished merging them yet. 4, plus 7. And Rat Oscar, plus 4. Again, they're not just using Ike, they're Veil supporting their Ike. We do remove their Bolt Tower, but um, I don't think they were planning around a Bolt Tower play anyway. Well, Shamir going in first. Shamir is our Fatal Smoke unit, so Ike not going to be healing up here. He's on 35 hit points. Camilla? 34. And I already know what's coming. Yeah, that's n n no damage. <laughs> because he has a frankly ridiculous amount of flat damage reduction. And. Well, because. Uh, Joe Shamir didn't live. Tina bringing him down to 5. 2. Oh, you jammy bastard. Well, the plan almost worked. The plan came very, very close to working. But unfortunately, we are now out of units that can really do any damage to Ike whatsoever. And, well, he didn't kill Freya. That's that's nice. But, yeah, I don't think we're really getting anywhere with this. Anywhere fast. Especially now it's their turn, they get to swing back. Guess what Ike does? As well as just tanking everything, he's also going to one-shot Byleth. Not even close. <laughs> now we dance him, and he's gonna... is he gonna one-shot it on? So 17 damage. We are going to have our... Armored, what do you call it? Ready to reduce the damage. It does not one-shot Idun, but it comes ridiculously close, even through 40% damage reduction. He's he's just he's just silly. Bale takes out Morabilis. From here, they could go get pots if they really wanted to. 
I don't know if they want to or not. It's the end of the season now. Well, maybe they do want to, given by how much space they're giving it on here. Do they know about chase targeting? I'm kind of suspecting that the answer here is no. But, um... Well, potentially throwing here. Probably not throwing, because, yeah, Vale is involved in the matter. And Idun doesn't hit particularly hard unless she's fighting an armored unit. And here is gonna be the end of things, I suspect. So yeah, frustratingly close to taking care of Ike there. If we could have had just a little tiny bit more damage, but a tiny bit we did not have. Well, next opponent here, Rath Tosca plus 10, Ashida plus 8, Hyapaya plus 10, Julian plus 5, Vale plus 10, and 4 plus 3. And for once, no bolt tower. So this is gonna be an honest fight. Do they have what it takes to cut through Drew Abila? Well, they seem pretty confident the first time around, but they're poking now and they're not seeing it, perhaps. Possibly because of the buffs that we stole from them with our Tina. Yeah, they're just dancing around over there, and it looks like they've given up on hit and run. Their new plan is... Sheeta. Attune Sheeta. Can she tank it? She has a lot of flat damage reduction. But when it comes to Deadeye... She's got nothing. Well, I mean, she still has the flat damage reduction, so I can't actually say that she has nothing. But she doesn't have any percentage damage reduction, and the flat damage reduction, even though it's a lot, is not going to be enough. Except they haven't given up yet. They have not. After all, Camilla out of our far save protection range. That's going to put an end to Shamir's action as well, but they seem to have realized that we can just dance Shamir whenever we want, and they're all in range. They can't get out of range. So that is the final surrender of the season. Not bad, okay? Not bad, considering how badly things could have gone there and how badly I'm expecting things to go next week. No, let's be positive. Next week's going to go great. We survived fairly unscathed, and we almost beat it like plus five of that. But, well, thanks everyone for showing up. Uh, we're getting really close to that 1,000 subscriber goal, so if you can push me just over the edge, that would be supremely cool. And as always, your likes, your comments are greatly appreciated for the algorithm. I will see you all next time. Panrust out.